Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here with Fireside Chats as we're sitting here talking about WWE's Survivor Series 2017. Um, this is honestly was the show that I was really fired up for. I thought this was going to be a really good pay-per-view when it was first announced, Raw versus SmackDown. I wasn't that high on Jinder Mahal uh, versus uh, Brock Lesnar, but uh, as everybody has seen, we have had a really big two days in WWE. AJ Styles becomes your WWE Champion. Um, we see um, you know John Cena named Team SmackDown. Uh, and this pay-per-view has really got a complete 180. Um, I cannot remember a pay-per-view having this many changes in it um, after basically being booked and then been shown to the public. Every year, you know, there's always those rumors about WrestleMania, about what the WrestleMania main event is going to be. And from my memory, the WrestleMania main event that was sort of uh, rumored to be out there has never really been the real WrestleMania main event to happen. Um, but a pay-per-view to have this many changes to the main event as well as the co-main event would probably have to be WrestleMania 8, and that's sort of been rumored uh, to just been an angle the way that it was all supposed to be played out. But as a kid, I can remember Hulk Hogan being named the number one contender to go after Ric Flair's championship back in 1992. Um, them having a sort of a press conference for it, it being on television, it sort of being a real big deal. And then Saturday night's main event comes when uh, Psycho Sid teams with Hulk Hogan. Um, and Sid walks out on Hogan, and Hogan ends up getting his butt kicked, and next thing you know, WrestleMania 8 has been changed, Macho Man Randy Savage is your new number one uh, contender, Hulk Hogan is challenging Psycho Sid in what is now going to be his retirement match. That is what comes to mind um, when I think of big changes to pay-per-views. Um, I think over the history of time, this is always going to be a pay-per-view that really sort of has a lot of mystique around it because of the changes that happen and a lot of people are going to wonder um, if this is Vince um, basically freaking out to low numbers um, with, with low television ratings over the last week with Halloween and other things. Um, if people are thinking that WWE is stale, if he is answering to the whole um, Chris Jericho jumping the New Japan Pro Wrestling news that broke this week. Um, you know, what happened? To really make this shake up. We know that it's basically two weeks in the works um, because the announcement of AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal um, was planned last Tuesday. Um, they had a week to sit there and then they actually went through with their plans. AJ Styles becomes the champion. That's a big main event um, for, for them to have of AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar. This is a dream match. Um, both of these guys, former New Japan um, champions, both of these guys, two of the biggest names in WWE. Um, definitely, when I've thought about Brock Lesnar matches and what is left for him in WWE, AJ Styles is the guy that I always thought of, but in the back of my mind, I always said that that, that match will probably never happen. And boom, here it is at the Survivor Series. Uh, when we look at the rest of the card that's going to be going down, this is a really good show with some really good, interesting matches. Team SmackDown versus Team Raw. Um, when basically it was sort of rumored that Kurt Angle, who had just wrestled at TLC before announcing Raw versus SmackDown, people thought that, uh, you know, Kurt Angle and Shane McMahon, people even thought that Daniel Bryan was going to wrestle in this. And I thought there was no way in the world. I thought that after Hell in the Cell, um, Shane was done being, uh, you know, a pro wrestler. I thought that TLC was a one-time appearance for Kurt Angle. Um... Both of these guys make the show. Um, we don't get to see Daniel Bryan. I honestly can say that I don't think Daniel Bryan's ever going to wrestle again. <laughs> team Raw is a very interesting team. And the first person that comes to mind is going to be because of Jason Jordan. Um, you know, he is on his first year uh, in uh, the WWE's main roster system. You know, he spent some time on SmackDown before jumping over to um, Monday Night Raw. Now he's been named as uh, Kurt Angle's son. Um, but uh, then you got three real, you know, big names. You've got Braun Strowman, you've got Finn Balor, you've got Samoa Joe. All of these guys have been in big matches for Raw on pay-per-view. Um, they've main evented Raw. Um, all real big names. But then when you look over at Team SmackDown, they might as well be called like Team Unity. I mean, the way they built this team with Rude, Orton, Nakamura, and Cena teaming up, you know, you don't really have the problems that you have over on Team Raw. Just on Raw this week, 
We've had Joe and Balor beating each other up before being named to the team. We've got Braun Strowman, who's beaten everyone up, babyface or heel, um, to, to just to prove how big of a monster he is. This is going to be a very entertaining match. Uh, the women's match, you've got Alicia Fox and Becky Lynch captaining their teams. Um, when you look at Team Raw, Asuka is the biggest exclamation point on this team. I really thought that she would be left off of the Survivor Series teams. Uh, because of the fact that she is so new to the roster, we've never seen her lose before. Um, if you go back throughout the history of time and, and past Survivor Series, whether if it's been like uh, how to eliminate Undertaker, how to eliminate Earthquake, Andre the Giant, guys that never lose on television, let alone pay-per-views, um, there's a way to get them out. You use the disqualification. You can always disqualify her for kicking too much ass. Um, you could have where Asuka gets counted out. Um, lots of things um, that could happen from this. But when you look at these teams, really, really good teams built by Raw and SmackDown, um, not using the champions in those. Uh, big changes came to the uh, championship match. I was really in love with The Shield. Uh, Dean Ambrose, as well as Seth Rollins, teaming up against The Usos. Um, as far as it comes to dream tag team matches, that probably was the biggest dream tag team match using guys in WWE at the time. <laughs> Cesaro and Sheamus going up against the Usos. That's a match that's still going to deliver and be a really good one. Alexa Bliss versus Natalia. Uh, when I was originally talking about this pay-per-view when it was first announced, I believe two weeks ago, I said that there would be changes, and I, I thought that the champions um, that were the champions at the time named in these matches would not be the champions come Survivor Series. In my mind, I thought Natalia was going to be the one um, that got sort of pushed out of this match, but here she is. Still going strong. I think there's going to be a little bit uh, to come in this match. We'll see. Uh, most interesting match to me was going to be The Miz versus Baron Corbin. Um, a lot of people really shitting on this match, not thinking that it's going to be much. But I think that this really could be a good one and not to fall asleep on this match. I think that The Miz has been you know, delivering great promos as well as great matches all the way through. And uh, I think that people who crap on Baron Corbin are doing it just for the fact that they don't really know enough about this guy. The guy he really can deliver. He's going to be a big name in the business someday. Um, this show gets polished out with a 205 Live Cruiserweight match. Um, this one's going to be Enzo going up against Kalisto. This is going to be a rematch. Everyone can remember Kalisto won the championship on Raw um, last month, and that was sort of a, a last-minute change as well. Enzo ended up getting the title back. Uh, this is probably the one video that I'll skip in the full show preview because I don't watch 205 Live. I let alone don't watch the Cruiserweights on Monday Night Raw. I can at least tell you the truth. I don't know enough about this, but I think that Enzo's going to be getting the win here. Um, just counting down the days. I thought that Sinkara already was announced uh, to be a part of the Cruiserweights on 205 Live when 205 Live first got named. Uh, but he's found his way back to the main roster. Would not be surprised if Sinkara would be the next guy uh, moved over and uh, Sinkara be the guy challenging Enzo for the title. So looks like a really good show. We'll talk about all the matches except for that 205 Live Cruiserweight match and uh, get back at you down the road. All right, as we power along with the uh, WWE Survivor Series 2017 coverage, we're talking about The Miz going up against Baron Corbin, Raw versus SmackDown Intercontinental Champion versus United States title champion. Um, sort of a very interesting matchup. Easiest thing to sort of pick up on is that both of these guys are heels. Um, that is something that's going to come up in a few of these matches. Um, you know, I think almost all of these singles matches, all the heels are champions at this time right now. Um, except for AJ Styles. Um, that's really weird now that I think about it. WWE hasn't been one to really jump on heel versus heel matches. You know, it's sort of, you know, in storylines to build up the bigger matches. They've done baby faces versus baby face matches, sort of name a number one contender. Um, somebody going after the title. You can remember the sort of mini feud that was John Cena versus Dean Ambrose, both beating each other up to try and figure out who was going to be the one who beat up Seth Rollins um, on pay per view. But uh, I think they even had a contract on a pole match on Monday Night Raw. But um, this is a very interesting match. Uh, Baron Corbin uh, has been doing a lot of his talking on Twitter, uh, talking about uh, the Miz's wife, Maurice, as well as Miz's soon-to-be-born baby girl. Um, and then Miz fired back 
on Raw, basically talking about you know the way that Baron Corbin was talking was for the indies, um, and then basically that wasn't a big big promo like the Miz could deliver, and Miz really did knock it out of the park talking about Baron Corbin, but we have not seen these guys interact. We've never seen these guys. We've probably never even seen these guys in the same room together. Um, so I, I think that this is going to be a really interesting match for the fact that, uh, you know, most people are going to be doubting on this. And I, I would bet if you listen to most people's prediction videos, they're going to be saying that Miz versus Corbin will probably be the dud of the night. But I believe in the Miz that I don't think he's going to let us down. I think that he will knock this uh, match out of the park. And I think Baron Corbin is somebody that slowly is going to become somebody that people are talking about. Uh, definitely the buzz that Baron Corbin has been getting as of late. If you go back throughout the summer before SummerSlam, him holding the Money in the Bank briefcase, but then losing it um, shortly uh, before SummerSlam, then not even beating John Cena in a no contest style match. There was no stipulations to it. Cena easily could have lost that match before going off to make uh Daddy's Home 2 or whatever uh, film he was making at the time. Um, but he did disappear and Cena still got the win. And people thought it was because of the way Baron Corbin was handling himself backstage. I never really believed those stories at all. As of right now, there's a story floating around about Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens being sent home uh, from the European tour, which... I don't buy anything of it. All these stories that always come out that people have heat backstage and people aren't getting along and the writers are going to you know, start you know, not giving guys pushes because they're, they're not getting along in the locker room. Um, I've never really bought into any of those stories that ever come out unless you just really hear it in an interview. Um, like when uh, at the time Alberto Del Rio just flat out said in a radio interview, he wished he could punch The Miz in the face. Uh, he is that annoying. Um, but when it comes to this match, um, I think that honestly, you're going to have to play the numbers game. Um, uh, you know, you're going to have to pick which side is your side because of the whole SmackDown versus Raw. Somebody has to be the baby, baby face. Somebody has to be the heel here. I'm going to be guessing that uh, The Miz is going to pick up the win more than likely. Um, the Axeman. Curtis Axel, as well as uh, Bo Dallas, will play into this with the Miz Taraj, um, and Monday Night Raw will get the win here with Miz being the best mid-card champion, holding the Intercontinental title high, and having bragging rights for the next year. Back at it with the Fireside Chats, sitting here talking about Alexa Bliss, going up against Natalia, Raw versus SmackDown, your Raw, Raw Women's Champion going up against your SmackDown Women's Champion. Very interesting matchup here with Alexa Bliss and Natalia both being heels in this match. Um, I, I really don't know how this one's going to pay off, but uh, it's just going to have to be, I guess, the best way to put it, it's going to have to be a bitch fest, uh, where both of these girls mostly... Uh, getting by uh, with their mouth and uh, sort of surprising us uh, with the actions that they they take. You know, I, I remember thinking Alexa Bliss, how small and how cute she was. Um, you know, basically being the five foot tall piece of attitude. Um, the the match that I can always remember is the match with her and Bailey um, using the kendo sticks. A lot of people did not like this match. I I really thought that it was it was a good match and it showed a different side of Alexa Bliss. Somebody who you would have thought would have just sort of been the cute little baby face going out there, um, wrestling the match, losing it here or there in two minutes on Monday Night Raw. But um, this this should be a really fun one. I really think that um, Alexa Bliss is probably going to come out on top here. Uh, Monday Night Raw pulling out another victory in my mind uh, in this Raw versus SmackDown uh, Survivor Series encounter. Um, you know, I, I, I think that if I look back in the memory banks, this match more than likely happened when Natalia and Alexa Bliss were both members of SmackDown. I cannot remember how that match um, evened out, but you think over the last year um, since, you know, Alexa Bliss moving over to Monday Night Raw, I really think that... Uh, I really think that she has really blossomed into a bigger superstar than I thought she was a year ago. Um, you know, somebody who in NXT was, you know, training as a wrestler, wrestling matches on NXT, then just sort of jumped over to managing uh, Blake and Murphy um, and not being used as a wrestler at all. And then once Blake and Murphy sort of hit their their peak, lost the championship, they, they weren't used at all, and Alexa bro broke out from the pack and just started, you know, beating everybody. Um, you know, she got moved up to the main roster um, without spending, you know, any time as the champion, which um, sort of is, is surprising because that was sort of the proving ground 
uh, for people being moved up to the main roster here. Um, with this match, I think that Alexa Bliss is going to pull out a victory. Um, but in the next video, I'll probably explain that I think that somebody is going to be waiting in the wings with a little Money in the Bank briefcase. At WWE Survivor Series 2017, I am predicting we see the first ever cash-in of the Women's Money in the Bank briefcase. Carmella has been carrying around that briefcase since June, um, when I guess she officially won it at the end of June uh, on SmackDown when the second ever Money in the Bank Women's uh, ladder match was held. Um, but, uh, you know, oh, that's my pizza. When this video is done, you got to remind me to go grab that. Uh, but... I am thinking that Alexa Bliss is going to be walking out of uh, Survivor Series with her hand held high, that she is going to be the one beating Carmella. Um, no, she's going to be the one that is going to be beating Natalia. I was wondering why I screwed up so bad right there. But uh, Carmella, in my mind, will come down. She will cash in the Money in the Bay briefcase on Alexa Bliss. Um, with watching SmackDown over this last week, um, we've seen Carmella come nowhere close to using that Money in the Bank briefcase. Uh, we've seen the man uh, that's been in her corner um, get beat by Becky Lynch. And then after the fact, Carmella gave him um, the sweet chin music, basically giving him the big super kick, leaving him laying. Uh, in my mind, that is going to be cutting all ties um, with Ellsworth and that she is you know, free to move. And then when she does beat Alexa Bliss, she is able to move to Monday Night Raw as the new Raw Women's Champion. Um, she will not have Ellsworth. And uh, it possibly won't be the one thing I was looking for, for from Survivor Series was to see guys jump ship from SmackDown to Raw or from Raw to SmackDown. So at Survivor Series, I am predicting that we see our first ever cash-in for the Women's Championship. Out of all the changes that happened uh, to WWE Survivor Series 2017, honestly, in my mind, the Raw Tag Team Championship switch uh, that happened on Monday was, to me, honestly, the most really surprising one. Uh, we had uh, Cesaro and Sheamus become the three-time Tag Team Champions, I do believe, by beating Ambrose and Rollins. Um, I, I know that there was plans uh, for the Shield reunion at TLC. I don't know where... Um, those plans were supposed to go, and I think a lot of the WWE Survivor Series 2017 changes have because they obviously had something for the Shield to do on this show, whether if that was um, you know represent Team Raw or um, anything like that. I, I got no clue what they were supposed to do. I think that now um, with Roman uh, returning uh, on Monday Night Raw, maybe something will be coming up sooner than later. Um, and maybe they'll even be on this Survivor Series show, but taking them out of this Ambrose and Rollins versus the Usos match, I was hyped. I mean, that was one of the matches that really put me over the top thinking that Survivor Series was going to be a really, 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 really good show. Uh, I know that last year's Survivor Series with the Raw versus SmackDown elimination matches um, really got me going for it. Goldberg versus... Um, uh, uh, Brock Lesnar snuck up on me as something that I was excited for, but um, even when I look at Cesaro versus Sheamus, uh, no, Cesaro and Sheamus um, challenging against the Usos, I think this is going to be a really, really good match. I think that you know, in my mind, we've seen this match before, um, so maybe I'm not that you know ecstatic about it. But I still think that you know Cesaro and Sheamus, when they first came into the tag division, I didn't think it was going to last this long. I thought they would just run an angle where they won the titles, and Mick Foley would look like a uh, you know a genius, and then over time these guys would break up. I believe at WrestleMania um, when they went into their match, and I think they wore the same attire for the first time, or at least that was the first time I noticed them wearing the same attire, um, is when the bar got raised, and you really was like, wow. They've taken these roles, and they're really going to run with it. Um, Sheamus, a former champion. Cesaro, um, a former United States champion. Um, both of these guys have a lot to offer um, to WWE, um, but them coming into the tag division was really something that was a surprise that really got us over. No one should be surprised about the Usos. I mean, these guys have been doing it strong for years in WWE, um, but uh, this run that they've been on ever since sort of reinventing themselves, I don't I don't know what to call them. If I, I know I've seen their videos of them on, on, on uh, Talking Smack um, with this sort of rapping gimmick or um, whatever this gimmick is of just taking it to the streets and just being badasses. 
Um, that's really what they are. And uh, you know, the match that they had at Hell in the Cell uh, going up against the New Day showed that these guys are able to do anything they want to to keep those championships and show everybody that they're the best. Um, at Survivor Series, I'm going to be taking um, the Usos to get this win uh, win here. I'm not sure if they're going to be using uh, the um, uh, Roman Reigns, uh, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose, the Shield, that they're going to have a match, I guess you could say, you could say the New Day, for causing them to lose those titles. Uh, but if not, I see them being involved in this match, uh, making sure that they're on the radar to get those tag titles back as soon as they can. So take Usos to get the win at Survivor Series. When I think about the women's 5-on-5 five -five traditional Survivor Series match at WWE 2017, I see a lot of names in here. Um, the, the one Survivor Series match that I can remember with women uh, was from uh, Survivor Series 2000. and uh, I'm going to guess here, but I think it was 2011 uh, where we saw Eva Marie uh, make her debut as well as JoJo was in the ring making her debut. Where it was sort of like Total Divas against the non-Total Divas and Total Divas got their ass stomped. Um, that, that's what I sort of see here. I, I see a lot of names. I don't really know what to think about here. It's going to be fun uh, to see Team, uh, Team SmackDown over there, Becky Lynch and uh, Charlotte Flair teaming together. Um, but I, I don't see a lot of chemistry uh, from these teams. I just see a lot of girls out there. That's why I think that this is probably the one match uh, on the Survivor Series that you know people aren't really going to care about. Um, it just seems like there's a lot of your names in here. When I think about what the story is going to be of the uh, five on five for Raw versus SmackDown, I think of uh, Alicia Fox being named as the team captain for Raw, which I think is going to be playing into Team Raw's demise. Um, Alicia Fox was a weird choice to put there, but she did win um, the three way to see who was going to be the team captain. Um, from there, she built a good team. I mean, putting um, Sasha Banks, putting uh, Asuka, and putting Nia Jax on the team. We all know that Bailey is going to be the fifth member here. Um, but when it comes down to it, you know, Fox has sort of been, I guess you can say, like almost like a bad NFL owner. Uh, <laughs> you know, just being very vocal, making sure that everybody knows that she is the boss. Um, and Sasha Banks is the boss. She's on the team. Get that. Uh, that came out of nowhere. But, um, but um, I, I, I can honestly see. Um, you know, Team Raw turning on Alicia Fox. You know, there has to be some sort of, of way. Asuka, who just made her debut at TLC, she is on this team. She's the biggest surprise to me. Is now you got to wonder: Is she going to be the one who wins this match? Um, you know, you've also got Nia Jax on the team. She's lost matches in WWE, but that's a bad analogy to call her the Andre the Giant of the women's division. She doesn't lose much, and when she does lose, there has to sort of be a gimmicky way. Um, of beating her. Um, you know, how are you going to get those two women out of this match um, and still have um, them be believable? Um, you know, you don't want to kill off Asuka's undefeated streak, um, but if, you know, Alicia Fox was the piss off Team Raw, uh, where we sort of had, you know, Asuka and Nia Jax sort of beating up Alicia Fox in the aisle way, and uh, maybe, you know, they're counted out or maybe they're disqualified for fighting each other and the refs can't fight it up. Then you're left with uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey, um, you know, sort of defending everybody off. If you go um, and, and you look at this, I think that you know definitely um, we see Team uh, SmackDown pulling out the victory here, even with Nia Jax and Austin. All right, this video here is going to be nothing more than me speaking off of uh, what I think is going to be happening. Um, there is no rumor that is going to be out there, but we all heard the rumor that uh, basically what was supposed to be at Survivor Series 2017 was supposed to be the four horsewomen of WWE going up against you know Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler, and uh, the other two, the four horsewomen of MMA. Um, since then, we have had Ronda Rousey training at the WWE Performance Center. Shayna Baszler is signed with WWE. Um, I can honestly tell you I don't know what uh, the... Uh, Buzz is on the other two if they've been signed by WWE or if they've just been training or if they still fight in MMA. Um, I was never able to pick their names up from being an MMA fan. I just knew that uh, Shayna Baszler, from her making her jump uh, from wrestling, uh, from uh, being in the UFC prior. But uh, the rumor has always been that, that that match is going to be happening. If you remember the uh, 
uh, the the, uh, the women's tournament uh, that went down, um, which was the May Young Classic. Uh, in the second round during a Shayna Baszler fight, we had the four horsewomen of WWE. We had Becky Lynch, we had Charlotte, we had Sasha Banks, and we had Bailey um, sort of storm towards the ring, issuing the challenge. Um, to uh, Ronda Rousey and her crew, basically saying that they were the real four horsewomen, they were the ones to mess with, um, and you know they were going to be stepping into WWE, they were going to have to go through them. Um, in this video, I will be sort of playing out what I think is going to be happening, uh, leading us to gaining ground towards this match, which is if it's going to be Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey, whether if it's going to be a four-on-four -four affair, if that's going to happen at WrestleMania. I think this is going to be step two, to get us to that match, I, I could honestly see um, Bailey being named to Team Raw. Then I see Oscar, Alicia Fox, and Nia Jax being eliminated from Team Raw, and I see basically it coming down to a two-on-two -two encounter um, with uh, Naomi. Um, we see um, Tamina, and we see Carmella being eliminated from Team SmackDown as well. This leaving us with the four horsewomen in the ring. Um, we have Charlotte, we have Becky Lynch uh, for Team SmackDown, we have Becky Lynch, and we have, I'm sorry, we have Sasha Banks, and we have Bayley uh, for Team Raw. This leads uh, for, I guess you can say, the invasion of the four horsemen women now storming towards the ring at Survivor Series. Now they are reissuing the challenge back um, at the Women of Wrestling, and, you know, we are one step closer to this match actually happening. Uh, Ronda Rousey appearing at Survivor Series will be, you know, quote-unquote WWE ESPN News. Um, that will be headlined almost everywhere. Um, you know, we are one step actually seeing her in a WWE ring. Um, since leaving UFC, um, people have still been clamoring to see what is coming next for her. Um, I had heard that the, the planned movies that she was supposed to shoot, uh, the Roadhouse remake as well as the biopic film on her life, were both sort of scrapped by Hollywood. That happens a lot, um, you know, after you sort of fall out of favor uh, with the world. And her being shocked with that first loss and not being able to come back and, and win her next, um, I guess, sort of ended uh, that streak for Ronda Rousey. So um, best of luck to her in WWE, but I think that she will be showing up at Survivor Series. All right, the five-on-five, five, which in my mind is still the main event of Survivor Series. Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. This match, to me, honestly, had a lot of surprises. To me, when I first heard about Team Raw versus Team SmackDown, um, I, I waited uh, until after the first Raw and SmackDown, after it was named, to start talking about this match, even though I was so fired up for it. And even after the first Raw and SmackDown, the only people that we had named um, for this match was Randy Orton for Team SmackDown. Um, rumors went rampant over the next week of people who was going to be named to fight in this. People were thinking that we would see Shane, we'd see Daniel Bryan, we'd see uh, a returning Kurt Angle. And I thought all of those rumors were bogus. I thought there was no way in the world uh, that anything was going to happen. I thought that this was going to be filled out by you know, Finn Balor and AJ uh, returning their match from TLC with the Raw vs. SmackDown uh, affair. Um, but, you know... Both of these teams built really, really good teams in my mind, minus Jason Jordan. Um, but uh, you know, the, being team captain by Shane uh, and by Kurt uh, plays in a lot to the upcoming Kurt versus Triple H match, which I think is going to be happening um, at WrestleMania 34 in New Orleans. Um, I'm not saying that that's going to be the main event, but it is really going to be one of the um, big matches that is going to be on the show. When Kurt Angle came back to WWE, it was always going to be a rumor whether if they were going to let him wrestle, whether if he was just going into the Hall of Fame, whether if they were going to find a way to use him on TV. Um, he went into the, um, the Hall of Fame, and on the very, I guess you can say almost next night on the Monday Night Raw, after WrestleMania, boom, GM of Raw. Um, uh, from there, they start this whole, you know, son storyline with Jason Jordan, um, and, you know, when Roman Reigns got sick of TLC, he was, the, you know, one of the guys they called. People said they called Cena. People said they called Jericho. Um, they couldn't find anybody to get in there. And the one person that they knew that was going to be able to create buzz was Kurt Angle. Um, people thought that Kurt Angle, there was no way in the world he would be medically cleared by WWE, um, who has sort of shut down past superstars as Edge, Mick Foley, Hulk Hogan, um, you know, Daniel Bryan. But uh, Kurt found a way to get it through. I guess his last few years of living clean where he says he, he doesn't uh, intake alcohol or drugs anymore. 
um, you gotta have the best wishes for this guy because as of late, you know, it, it was sort of a iffy, you know, what his future was going to be. And it's sort of sad now to change things and go over and talk about TNA Impact for a minute, but this is the only floor I have to speak on this is, is that basically now it's weird to be seeing Kurt's ex-wife married to Jeff Jarrett and Jeff Jarrett now going through pretty much the same problems that Kurt was going through a few years ago. I don't want to point fingers. The only thing I can really say is that I hope that Jeff Jarrett gets the help he needs sooner than later. Um, breaking down this match of uh, you know basically who built the best team, Team SmackDown looks freaking tough, man. I mean, they built a team of five baby faces um, built around, you know, the future and, you know, legends of, of wrestling. You've got Bobby Roode. You've got Nakamura, two guys coming into SmackDown, debuting in the last year. Um, you've got Randy Orton and John Cena, two of the biggest names uh, in professional wrestling. Um, I, I think that, I can't remember how many times Orton sold the title, but off my top of my head, I'm going to guess 12. You've got um, John Cena with 16. 28 championships between those two guys right there. Um, Shane McMahon, a guy who's never held the title higher than the European title, but the best European champion we've ever seen in the biz, baby. Um, Shane coming in there was a real surprise to me. People said that you know after um, Hell in the Cell um, that we would never see him wrestle again. It was sort of like when Vince McMahon killed off the McMahon uh, character, saying that he was never going to wrestle again after the Bret Hart match at WrestleMania 26. Um, but I guess they see dollar signs and they think that they can pay off on the King of the Ring match of the past between Kurt Angle and Shane McMahon um, when they really beat the hell out of each other. That was, that was a big one right there. Um, that, that's a really good team. You know, Kurt Angle, um, he went out there and got, I guess you can say, three of the biggest names of Team Raw, not including Ambrose, uh, Rollins, and Reigns. Reigns, who was out on injury. Um, he wasn't able to use um, Ambrose and Rollins because at the time they were the tag champs and they were booked against the uh, SmackDown champions, that being um, the Usos. Um, so you can't really fault him at that, but you got to be thinking that an emergency meeting, you know, right now isn't being named, especially after, you know, they can name John Cena to Team SmackDown on Twitter. Why can't uh, Kurt Angle basically come out and say that, hey, I've changed my mind. Maybe it's not the best idea in the world to have Jason Jordan on this team when you've got three of the most elite superstars in WWE and The Shield, um, all three former champions. Uh, you know, you got a Royal Rumble winner. You've got two Money in the Bank winners. Um, you know, all three guys have hold, uh, held uh, their champions of their brand. And you've got Jason Jordan on your team. And that's it. Doesn't make a lot of sense over there. But... Um, a lot of storylines that could play off on this, basically, of Shane beating Kurt. Um, maybe even, you know, being the reason that Stephanie and Triple H come back to television um, and push their way back into Raw management. Um, and Kurt is on the outside. I don't know what place he would hold if he's not the GM. Why he keeps showing up on Raw um, that would keep you in the mood for a Triple H versus Kurt match at WrestleMania. Um, but that is definitely going to be set up around there. But people are thinking that maybe um, Jason Jordan will turn on Kurt. I don't think that's going to happen. But I definitely could see the official turn of Jason Jordan. People are already starting to boo this guy. But at some point, he has to sort of you know embrace the booing. Uh, and maybe even play off of the Lex Luger and Sting feud of 1995, where Lex Luger was playing the heel, but anytime Sting was looking, he was the babyface. But at the minute Sting would turn around, you know, he'd turn around and tell a fan in the front row to fuck off. You know, it, 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 it was a good feud then. I don't remember how, really remember how it panned out and how it finished, but um, something like that honestly would be really fun. Um, the three guys, Strowman, Balor, and Joe, I wonder how these guys are going to coexist uh, on their team as you can remember last uh, month at TLC Strowman had his whole team turn on him uh, last week on Raw we had Joe and Balor in an all out brawl um, before both being named at this team so there is really no love no chemistry um, to what is the, the Raw team so um, we'll have to see how this pans out um, You know, a big thank you to John Cena uh, for coming back and returning at the show um but uh, I want to see what happens from here. I think that you know a lot of these guys in this match have a bright future in WWE. Um, you know the last year's 
Um, Survivor Series tag match, I believe, went about 40 to 45 minutes, if I remember off the top of my head. So this match, getting a lot of time, um, it would be really fun. Just hope that we don't see Shane, you know, basically with his brains sprawled out all over the mat like last year already you know did that you know coast to coast but then got speared by roman reigns during it so we'll see um definitely team smackdown for the win and uh, we got to see how a lot of these storylines pan out the match with the most changes at wwe survivor series 2017 as of right now looks like it's billed as the main event pushing itself above the uh the raw versus smackdown five on five men's match um Jinder Mahal's out. AJ Styles, your new SmackDown champion, is going to be challenging against your Universal Champion, Brock Lesnar. This is one hell of a match. This right here is another one of those WrestleMania dream matches that WWE has been delivering us um, the last few months. People thought they were crazy uh, when they gave us Nakamura versus Cena. People thought they were crazy when we got Cena versus Reigns. Um, we got AJ um, going up against Finn Balor. But uh, Brock versus AJ is a match that I honestly never thought was going to happen either. You know, SmackDown would keep AJ Styles at bay and he would never cross paths with Brock Lesnar or just WWE would never pull the trigger on it. Um, in my mind, I think that Brock Lesnar, um, the only competitor I can think of that he's had like AJ Styles would have to be the Beast in the East match. Uh, against Kofi Kingston, and that one didn't go that well for Kofi Kingston. Um, definitely, AJ is going to have to use speed um, and his style to sort of keep Brock at bay. Um, they're not going to be able to, you know, get close because anytime Brock is able to wrap AJ in his arms, he's going to throw him. He's going to toss him German suplex style. Um, definitely, this match is a more sexy, more appealing match. Uh, than the Jinder Mahal match was going to be. I don't see how that match was going to last longer than two to three minutes. Um, it was going to be like a WWE Superstar squash style match in my mind. Even if the Singh brothers, even if the great Khali came, how in the world could you possibly see um, Jinder Mahal doing any offense to Brock Lesnar? Jinder Mahal being the one who brought the fire to this match did not make any sense at all. Um, I really think um, that this is going to be a good one. Um, the, the biggest surprise that could come out of this match would be AJ Styles beating Brock Lesnar. That um, does make a lot of sense to me in the fact that you know SmackDown did just name um, him champion um, and for him to beat Jinder Mahal and then you know, turn around and lose to Brock doesn't make much sense. But then again, this could just be the biggest clusterfuck match of all time if this is the true main event um, because of the fact that you know it is for brand supremacy and who wants to see their champion uh, not be as good as the other champion. Plus, in the back of your mind, um, you got to be wondering what is going on with SmackDown not using Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn on their Survivor Series match. Um, so how do they get involved? Do they, do they get involved in the 5-on-5 five five, screwing with Shane? Or do they have bigger fish to fry and want to say that they're going after the biggest prize out there and they start messing with AJ um, to where you know Brock gets caught up and Brock uh, ends up getting the, the victory here? Um, definitely, you have to keep in your back of your mind um, you know, what is going on uh, with, uh, with um, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. With them being the biggest story at Hell in a Cell a month later at Survivor Series, it doesn't make sense for them not to be used. I know a lot of people out there believing this sort of story that's out there on the internet right now, that they got sent home from the European tour. They have this, you know, sort of heat uh, built up against them. I don't put any stock into that story at all. Um... One one way or another, maybe they left. Maybe they didn't leave. Maybe they were supposed to get beat up after their match on SmackDown. Maybe they weren't. Um, but I don't think that Sammy and Kevin Owens are disgruntled. I don't think that they're arguing with people on the SmackDown bus. I, I, I don't know why people would make up a story like that. But I just don't believe the story that is out there until there is significant proof um, about it. I don't think that either one of these guys are going to be, you know, yeah, they're friends with Neville. Yeah, they're friends with Jimmy Jacobs. But are they really ready to get fired? 
um, in order to do it. Even if you know people put up the story basically saying that you know look at all the money that the young bucks, um, you know Kenny Omega are making on the outside. You know they could go out, they could work indies with their names, um, and you know sell lots of T-shirts, make lots of dates. Um, I'm not quite sure that they want to go out and live that life again. So that's just me. Uh, you know, uh, maybe they get in involved in that five on five. Maybe they get involved in this match. But I mean, all I can really say on this is that this is a dream, dream match. And to go from Jinder Mahal versus Brock, a match that nobody cared about besides for Assault and Battery 777, um, for him to make that video saying that Jinder was actually going to beat Brock clean was comical. And for them, for him to have to come back a day later and make a video basically saying that AJ beat him and that Jinder wasn't the champion again uh, made it even more funny. Um, what happens from here, um, Jinder is named to have a match in India um, against Kevin Owens uh, on the, I, I believe it's a Monday Night Raw show um, over there. That's not going to be on Raw, it's just going to be their brand. But... Um, they're sending him over there for the, uh, you know, the, the, I guess you can say the rub. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe plans change. Maybe they do gender versus AJ. Um, and maybe we see another title change, another title hold for, for uh, gender. I, I don't put in any stock in that. I, I don't put in any stock in that at all. Um, gender was an experimental champion. Um, I hope that everything that they were going for, uh, in India, they got. I hope that they are able to acquire one hell of a television contract. I hope that they, um, you know, got sold out shows, however many days of tour they're going. But I don't think anybody, United States, India, Europe, anywhere, wants to see Jinder Mahal be champion again. But this match right here, Brock versus AJ, it's going to deliver. It's going to be one hell of a one hell of a match. Um, I, I, I a minute ago I picked AJ to win it. But I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> but I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. Stick with the guns right here. AJ Styles to beat Brock Survivor Series 2017.